Pixel phones have always felt like home, but this time home feels a little big. Now, don't get me wrong, I still get those laying down naked on a bare skin rug while sipping a glass of port type feelings, but now it feels like I'm doing that in the middle of a concert hall instead of a cozy cabin. So for example, the Pixel 6 display is 6.4 inches, the Pixel 5's display is 6 inches, and the Pixel 4's is 5.7. Um, I went with a stormy black color option. It's Terrible for fingerprints, I know, but honestly, I didn't care because I thought the contrast between the dark and light grays just looked too cool not to get, even though I've been exclusively using it in this sweet sage green case the whole time. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll drop a link in the description. Uh, not sponsored, not sponsored. Now, without a case, I have found it to be super duper slippery to the point where I'm like legitimately paranoid to use it without one, which sucks because I don't like transparent cases and I think it's a pretty cool looking phone. Um, that said, if you're wondering about the durability of the glass on the back, I can't help you there, sorry, but I haven't been using a screen protector and so far that Gorilla Glass Victus is still mint, which is a good sign because my hobby activities aren't exactly easy on my phones. <laughs> so I'd classify the display as good or fine. Um, I've been a little underwhelmed with it though. It is an AMOLED display and I think the colors look great, but it's only got a full HD plus resolution with a 90 hertz refresh when even mid-range phones are coming out with full HD plus 120 hertz displays. And even though it's still plenty viewable outdoors, it is lacking a bit in max brightness, topping out at around 840 nits with adaptive brightness enabled and only a little over 470 with manual brightness. So. The fingerprint reader has been a point of contention with most, if not all users, and I get it, man. It's been not only slow, but consistently inaccurate for me. But now that the December update's been out for a bit, it's way better than before. Although still slower than other phones. <laughs> uh, the stereo speaker sounds fine. Uh, nothing impressive though. They can get loud, but they sound a little bright when most people, including myself, prefer a bit of a warmer tone. But for binge watching TikTok or more dialogue based videos in general, they're perfectly acceptable. And besides, you know, most of us are using headphones or Bluetooth speakers for music nowadays anyways, right? So there were quite a few bugs that were fixed in that December update. And while I didn't personally experience most of the bugs others have, uh, things I've noticed like the screen flickering while adjusting and the screen brightness has been fixed. Uh, the smooth display refresh rate not dynamically switching has been fixed. The persistent app media controls and the notification shade bug seems to have been fixed too, which was crazy annoying. And of course, like I said, the fingerprint reader's much better now. Still a little slow, but completely acceptable consistency rates. Day-to-day uh, -day performance has been fine, as can be expected these days with almost any phone. And gaming's been great with no apparent massive frame drops due to thermal throttling, which has been really nice. Uh, Android 12 still taking a bit for me to get used to, but in general, I like the changes and additions, except for the whole dynamic theme thing. I don't like any of the colors in the color palettes available, and I've tried so many different wallpapers looking for a color combination I'd like, but most, if not all, colors offered are like light-themed pastel-type colors, and I'm not really into that. I just wish we could pick our own colors, you know? Uh, there's a few other things here and there I think could have been done different too, but in general, I like the new look. It's clean and minimal while still packing in even more little useful quality of life improving features with this new version. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell you how much screen on time I get with its 4600 milliamp hour battery thanks to Android 12's new battery usage info screen, but most days I get about a full day and most of the next morning before needing to recharge. Uh, personally, all I care about is having a full day covered I can always charge while I'm sleeping, so battery life on this phone is fine for me, but I know some people are like super heavy users, in which case battery life might be lacking a little for some of you. So unfortunately, almost the entire time I've been reviewing this phone, the province of BC, which is the province where I live here in Canada, has been smashed with rainstorm after rainstorm. So I've only been able to get out once to take photos outside and once at the museum, which I thought would suffice for test shots considering all the different lighting there is. Uh, that said, the 50 megapixel main camera and the 12 megapixel ultra wide on the back unsurprisingly did really well. I think the colors are matched very closely, if not identically between the two sensors. Lighting's great, contrast is great, dynamic range is better than ever. And I think the colors have just the right amount of saturation and vibrance so photos still pop without looking like a bloody neon sign, but I was just super impressed with the low light performance. Like even when scenes look too dark and grainy in the viewfinder, after snapping the shot with night mode disabled, it still turned out great. Uh, partially thanks to Google's voodoo magic, but also because it just has a bigger sensor now. Um, although night mode really does take low light shots to the next level though, doesn't it? 
Software video stabilization does a fantastic job, and of course, 4K video looks great with good colors and really smooth exposure transitioning. The 8 megapixel selfie cam looks fine as usual. Um, I'm not much of a selfie taker, but the few I did take looked as good as any other high-end phone. Anyways, I think for the price, it's still an awesome phone, and quite honestly, as far as I'm concerned, there really isn't anything meaningful to complain about, but if I was to go anal retentive on this, I'd ask for a 1440p 120 hertz display in a smaller size and better speakers, but really that's it. But what do you guys think? Like, are you on the same train as me by just accepting the larger size and slightly unimpressive display, or are you skipping this new Pixel lineup altogether and going for something else? Drop me a comment and let me know. Uh, well, I think that's gonna do it for this one, but thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Cheers.